Kim, would you stop taking pictures of yourself? Your sister's going to flop. This is Flop Culture. Welcome back to Flop Culture, a podcast where we talk about our favourite flops, bops, celebrity culture and everything in between. My name is Fanula J. I am delighted to have you with me here today. What a week. What a week it's been. I'd say Olivia Wilde was very glad of the events that took place. I'll say no more on that. Too soon? Anyway, nice wanted distraction there from everything that we spoke about last week. Uh, Some breaking news that won't be for you, but it is breaking for me, but it is truly quite frightening. Vanessa from Selling Sunset is married, married to the fella that she had on the show, Nick Hardy, big Holly Oaks villain looking head on him. They have gotten married in a stunning outdoor ceremony at the Fairmont Grand, Grand de Ma- Del Mar in San Diego on September 3rd. Speaking to Brides Magazine about their special day, of course, the newlywed said, we wanted the event to be intimate yet grand and to create something that would blow people's minds. Just like our love, this event had to reflect their fairy tale love story. That's good, isn't it? Good for them. I cannot believe they're married. Uh, is this going to feature on the next season? 50% of me hope so. 50% of me never wants to hear about these two people again. But anyway, glad they're happy, I suppose. Uh, will we get into the news? Shall we? Okay, barring Vanessa's nuptials, I wanted to talk a little bit about the Kardashians this week. It's very Kardashians focused. It's been a busy fortnight or so for every individual family member. Lots going on. And it's just, it's kind of prompted this bigger question for me, which I will put to you when I'm finished going through their dossier, everything they've been up to over the last little while um, around the Kardashians, where they stand in culture, their influence on society, where they're at now, because I just find it quite fascinating to watch them move into this next phase and acknowledge that maybe they don't have the same hold over Gen Z that they would have uh, however many years ago. Very interesting. Very interesting. Um, if I if this podcast does nothing, it will hopefully teach me other synonyms for the word interesting. But anyway, let's get into it. Starting with Kim Kardashian's new private equity firm, Sky Partners. What the hell is an equity firm? You ask. Great question. Uh, and I'm taking this from Bloomberg because I'm not David Mc Williams. Uh, he is somewhere. He's you know when Raven gets like she's having a vision. David Mc Williams starts twitching when he hears people who are unqualified talking about economics and finance. Uh, so he is right now because he can feel me. His Mc Williams senses are tingling. This is from Bloomberg. So basically, the basic idea is that these companies buy up smaller companies that are relatively cheap, spruce them up, make them more attractive to other buyers so they can sell them at a profit in a few years. The target might be a struggling public company or a small private business that can be combined or rolled up with others in the same industry. And what's significant about this is that Kim Kardashian is already a billionaire, but this could and probably will, let's be honest, make her a double billionaire, even more of a billionaire, a squillionaire, This is going to make her even richer than she already is. Uh, People who work in or with these private equity funds, private equity firms even, uh, they make billionaires out of so many of its founders. Funds have snapped up businesses from pet stores, doctors practices, newspapers, PE firms. Like it's just, it's, uh, I'm sharpening my knives so that we can eat the rich later on. Uh, She's doing this with a guy called Jay Simmons. He's a venture capitalist and former Carlyle Group Incorporated partner. Uh, And their firm is planning to invest in consumer media, entertainment businesses, consumer products, luxury, hospitality, digital commerce, all kind of in her bag. I think most people would agree. The firm hasn't made any investments yet, but plans to start later this year. But this news prompted me to think of probably... One of my favourite flops, if not my favourite Kardashian flop, because this isn't Kim's first foray into finance, certainly not. Who remembers the Kardashian card with a K? Uh, A prepaid prepaid credit card that the sisters launched in 2010. That was an insane flop, mainly around its 
absolutely extortionate pricing model. So it to explain, it was a card that was prepaid, aimed at teenagers, children, essentially. The card was prepaid, so you added money to it. It wasn't just a thing that you could go willy-nilly on in the mall, or whatever the Americans say. Um, but the fees associated with it were just absolutely insane. So the cost of the card for the first year was $99.00 which included a one-time purchase of $9.95, 12 months of monthly fees at $7.95 per month, a preloaded deposit minimum of $5. After the first year, a $7.95 monthly fee was assessed. And then if you preferred a six-month option on the card, uh, the cost was $59.95. So fees did not stop there, dear listener. ATM withdrawals, cost users uh, $1.50 in addition to your normal ATM fees. Automatic bill pay using the card cost $2 per item. There was a 2.5% fee for instant transfers made from credit card or debit card. If you want to add money to the card, that's a dollar. So even if you're just, you want to add $20, it's $21. Sorry. And if you want to close the account, oh, excuse me. (coughs) If you want to close the account, it's $6. If you have a question about the card, it was $1.50 to speak to someone on the phone. On the phone. It was, oh my God. And if you look at this card, it's literally just your bog standard Revolut type card with the most like teen, naughties, teenies picture of them in the Herve, however you pronounce that designers, but the bandage dresses and they're just like looking at you while you go up and get your coffees and pay probably $800 for a coffee. Absolutely extortionate. Um, this was a flop, but uh, they did manage to fend off a $75 million lawsuit around the card uh, because the company who made the card claimed, with a K, no, I added that in, uh, claimed that Kim and Chloe were to blame for the collapse of the credit card company because they were hired as spokespeople. It was essentially SponCon, right? It wasn't Kim and Chloe and Courtney weren't at the printers printing off the cards. Like they weren't, they weren't in the AIB, you know what I mean? Asking, do you really need to speak someone or can you do something at one of the machines? This was SponCon, right? So Revenue Resource Groups, so they owned the card. They sued the sisters, uh, their mother, Chris Jenner, and their Dash Dolls company, throwback, in state court in California in 2011 for allegedly walking away from a deal to promote the branded prepaid card known as the Kardashian card. The early TV stars allegedly agreed to say nice things about the card in the press and on social networking websites in exchange for a flat fee and a percentage of revenue from customers who signed up. But they later soured on the arrangement when the card came under fire for high fees, terminating their deal and making disparaging comments about the card. So the company sued them, claiming $75 million of damages, for this alleged breach of contract, they came back with, I think it's called an anti-slap motion, which is basically a tactic used in California to escape lawsuits that arise out of people speaking their minds on issues in the public, basically free speech. Um, And they won because they tend to win. Don't come up against the Kardashians in a court of law because they just will not, you will not win. We've seen it with Black China. We'll probably see it with Ray J as I'm about to talk about but yeah, the judge basically said, look, it was actually because the card was an absolute steaming heap of dog shit. It actually had nothing to do with the fact that the gals weren't like, love it, girlies. Just getting just getting petrol with my Kardashian card. What about you, girlies? Um, so yeah, we also have finally news about Kim's Spotify podcast. We got news of this in 2020, right? And it's we're only it's only coming to fruition now, which is fair enough. Podcasts take time. Maybe not this one, uh, but obviously this one is focusing on true crime and her work with law reform and stuff. So whatever. But I just, I found the reporting about this a little bit weird this week because people are like, Kim Kardashian has a podcast with Spotify and you'll never believe the topic it's on. And it's like, yeah, it's true crime. But it's if you've even kind of vaguely watched them in the last three years, you'll know that this is very much her bag. But she's given more of an insight into it with Interview Magazine. The podcast is called The System. The first season is about a really crazy case where a guy got the death death sentence for a triple homicide that happened in Ohio. There are so many twists and turns with how it was handled or mishandled and we take the listener along for a journey in search of the truth. I still don't think there's word on a release date yet. Will be interesting to see what comes out of that, whether it's any good. Ray J, I mentioned him a little bit earlier. He has been on the rantan this week on the topic of his sex tape with the aforementioned Kim Kardashian. 
Uh, I kind of thought this was unprompted, but it actually wasn't. So the whole thing was that Chris Jenner, the mom, was on the Late Late Show with James Corden. I think she was on with younger sister Kylie to talk about their new makeup collab with Kylie Cosmetics. And she sat a lie detector test. And on the lie detector test, she was asked about the sex tape and whether she was asked if she helped release release it. And she said she didn't or whatever way the question was phrased. Basically, again, denies leaking it, denies any involvement, whatever. So then Ray J came out and has claimed that Chris was involved, watched the tape, uh, watched multiple different versions of the 2000 tape, was basically told that, basically that it was a collaboration to release this tape um, and that there were three, he kind of showed these documents, right? This is all alleged, unverified, but he showed these documents in an Instagram video that may still be live and if not, it exists somewhere else if you want to watch it. Um, But one document shows like three deliverables, right? And they're titled Tape 1, Cabo Intro, Tape 2, Cabo Sex, Tape 3, Santa Barbara Sex. Uh, and he alleges that Chris Jenner had asked, him, had asked him and Kardashian to record the Santa Barbara tape, which we all know now as Kim Kardashian Superstar, released in 2007 uh, by uh, by Visit, Vivid Entertainment. Vivid claimed that they bought it off an unidentified third party for $1 million, and, and it features the two of them doing what you'd expect uh, while they were dating uh between 2002 and 2006. Kim and Chris have always, always, always denied like any involvement. Obviously, there have been questions around it because it launched her career in ways. I know people debate that. Obviously, she was famous before the tape because she was a famous person's daughter. They had the reality show, everything else. But Ray J has been on this kind of... Soapbox is the wrong word, but basically he's been making these allegations for a long time. Even back in May earlier this year, he said, he told the Daily Mail it had, it was never was a leak, saying it was a deal in a partnership between Chris Jenner and Kim and me. Uh, he said he decided to speak out after the tape featured prominently in the first several episodes of season one of The Kardashians, which is the family's new show on Hulu that premiered in April and the second season uh, debuts next week. For anyone that's watched the show, they'll be familiar, but for anyone who hasn't, Kim is basically like the plot line for those first few episodes is that she was being threatened with the release of purported extra footage from the sex tape. And then in the show's third episode, we see her ex-husband, Kanye, uh, traveling from New York to Los Angeles and back to get the remaining footage from Ray J. As I said, historically, Kardashian and Jenner have maintained that they did not orchestrate the release of the tape it's regularly like referenced and kind of joked about now within their circle. When Kim did Saturday Night Live in her monologue, she cracked a joke about Chris forgetting to tell her that the sex tape was premiering in 2007. And even with this most recent collaboration with Kylie, one of the crayons or lip kits, something to do with lips anyway, in the new collab that Kylie and Chris are doing, one of the crayons is called But As Her Manager, which is the line that Chris says in kind of the the episode where they're finding out about the sex tape on Keeping Up with the Kardashians, where she's like, as a mother, I was furious, but as her manager. So, not sure what will come of that. I'd imagine this is, this is going to go to the... Like, there's a part of me that wonders why it hasn't gone to the courts already, if he has this much proof, as he seems to be showing... And I can understand the frustration if it is a lie and from his perspective being like seeing everything that they've achieved since, but that wasn't like, whether you like them or not, right? And I don't particularly, I don't stand particularly strongly on any of them. My biggest, I suppose, moment when I was engaging with them was Kim's marriage to Chris Humphreys, because if you listen to Bandwagons, you know how much I complain about uh, not having access to satellite channels as a kid. So when we did get E as a preteen in my teens, what a moment. Um, but it was around that time. So it would have been Courtney and Kim take New York. That's when I would have watched the show and engaged with the media the most on them. And then I suppose I kind of came back when Kim got with Kanye because I was predominantly more of a Kanye fan and watching their relationship and watching how the media perception changed towards her was truly a surreal watch. 
that's been the most I've been engaged with them. I've really taken a step back. I don't really watch the new show. I watch it through social media. And I suppose this is why I want to talk about it around their questioning their relevance today in 2022. But going back to the Ray J thing, I do just wonder, I'm sorry, my point was is that whether you like them or not, they are smart people. And even if they're not incredibly smart people, they're smart enough to associate with smart slash smarter people, which by default (laughs) makes them kind of smart. They're tactical. They know what they're doing. There's a part of me that feels like whatever about the truth, because I just, that is so beyond, I don't even... I don't even care at this point, right? Because it's never, they they absolutely capitalised on the release. Whether they were involved in the orchestration of the release or not is actually so beyond not relevant to me. We've moved so far past that and I find it hard to think of anyone who would actually really, who really gives a shit about this information. You know what I mean? I feel like it was kind of, we all knew you know, and this is maybe some people getting lost in the sauce. But there's a part of me that wonders, and there's obviously a financial thing here, but if Ray J is convinced, has all this documentation, why it hasn't gone to court already? And is it just because he knows that he won't win? Is it because it's a lie? I don't know. Um, I just, it'll be interesting to see whether he says anything else over the next coming days. I don't think he will. In terms of the others, what are the others at? Kendall Jenner went on Jay Shetty's podcast and for some reason, naively, I thought it would be more interesting than it was. It wasn't. Uh, she was talking about her modelling career and, you know, feeling burnt out and uh, she how she kind of like took a step back when she was 24 because she was getting burnt out. There, were, there was a core five years where I was extremely overworked, not my happiness. And I felt like I was saying yes to everything because I felt really grateful to be in the position that I was. There's something very... I don't know what the word is, but hearing a Nepo baby talk about burnout, or hearing a Nepo baby model talk about burnout, that's something, isn't it? I think the reason why this stuck out for me was because I'm seeing them, and it goes back to that wider question of the relevance, I'm seeing them make these choices that surface level seem kind of interesting. Doing a podcast like this, Chloe Kardashian previously doing hot ones. Like I remember being genuinely quite excited and interested for that because I'm familiar with hot ones format. If you're not get familiar, it's basically this guy interviews celebrities while they're eating chicken chicken wings and the chicken wings get progressively hotter. Um, they're always, they're soft interviews, but they're very researched, uh, very methodical. It's Sean Evans as the host and the team behind them. It's really, really strong. Some really good episodes there. So when I saw her doing that, I was like, oh, that's interesting. Like, I wonder what they're going to get into. And I knew it wasn't going to be, you're not, it's not an interview where you're there to be grilled. You're there to really talk about whatever it is, your craft. And she's a bit more unique in the sense that she is a model, influencer, everything else. People have certain thoughts about those two careers and industries, blah, blah, blah. But the interview was flat. Like, it's very flat. She's still very guarded and I suppose I'd forgive Chloe a little bit more for that because she faces a lot more scrutiny, I suppose, than the others. And a lot of the scrutiny is focused around how she looks, which is unfair. There is another side that would argue that they are responsible for that argument over how much they have manipulated their image over the years. And I believe that. I believe two things can be true at once, but I feel like the it's the media's fault that I think it's the media's fault in part that they felt the need and still feel the need to manipulate their images so much. Anyway, the interview was very soft, not very interesting, didn't even really get any sense of her personality, which is what usually is brought out of the interviewees on Hot Ones. So then I saw Kendall doing this. I was like, this is a bit interesting. It's a bit left to feel for them. And I feel like it's them really attempting to pull back authenticity and that kind of because they don't have it. And I think even with this new show, the whole premise that it's like more docu-series and it's really behind the scenes and you're re- you're seeing everything, you're only getting half the story and because it's like streaming, we can be more transparent. There's my phone, sorry. I have some neck to talk about Kim Kardashian doing a podcast when I can't even turn my phone on silent. Anyway, I feel like they're still 
as they've moved out of and as they're continuing to move out of this reliance on social media because their audience is moving away from that and I suppose getting a bit smarter as to how they engage with them on those platforms it's interesting to see them continue to chase authenticity that they just can never have even with this, even with the Ray J thing, I suppose, and if you are, to, if you're to believe it is true, to play devil's advocate here, how orchestrated that was with the documents, like the deliverables, everything else, it just feels like they're on. It's a wild goose chase for whatever they're chasing, which is why they're making decisions like this to appear that they're being more transparent. And look, I don't whatever it totally makes sense for Jay Shetty to have someone like Kendall Jenner on it totally makes sense for something like Hot Ones to have someone like Chloe Kardashian on because if you love them you're gonna watch if you hate them you're gonna watch probably for a hate watch if you're in any way mildly curious like myself you're gonna watch slash listen but I just I really feel like I don't want to say they're like scrambling because they're clearly not they're clearly making money but even you can see with Kim's move into private equity and more the companies and the business. And as I said, moving away from that full influencer lifestyle into entrepreneur mode, you can see that it's really a moment where they're passing. I can see this as them, they're moving on and the kids are next. And I think, again, most people who've had any way of a sideway eye on them will have presumed that to be true. Um, But I think we're really seeing the steps into motion now because I think the most relevance they've had in years was Kourtney Kardashian and Travis Barker getting together because again that is authentic I do believe they're in love whether you want to talk about the rigmarole around the whole thing the massive wedding the fact that it was essentially potentially probably allegedly in partnership with Dolce & Gabbana to kind of revive that brand but even with Kourtney and Travis now that interest is kind of waning Chloe's really taken, not Chloe, Kylie is really taken. I think a step back post, Astro, like she's still doing the Kylie Cosmetics bit, but even at that, that brand is totally down the swanee since they sold Cody. Now, I think that's changes in the makeup industry as well. There's just no interest there for those products, those type of products, those types of collections. Hence why they're going so hard with the press on it, I think. I just really feel like in some ways they're trying to stay in the space and really failing badly. And I think another good example of this is the Kourtney Kardashian boohoo deal. So she was recently named sustainability. Oh my God. Remix. Oh my God. I couldn't say it again. Sustainability ambassador for boohoo. Uh, team up with the UK based apparel brand for a partnership based on her signature runway style okay and sustainable conscious practices Uh, and the announcement came with a capsule collection debut at New York Fashion Week which happened this week Um, but it's just you can see Courtney wanting to be like the green girl the wellness girl natural girl like clean girl I'm doing inverted commas but nobody can see because this is not a visual medium And you can see her seeing a contract like this and being like, of course, this makes sense. This makes absolute sense. Um, But this is a company that are currently under investigation over greenwashing claims uh, and whether their previous sustainable fashion claims are misleading customers. Uh, They are, just FYI, spoiler alert. Um, She did admit some trepidation uh, upon signing up with Boohoo, saying, when they first approached me with this idea that was all about sustainability and style, I was concerned about the effects of the fast fashion industry on our planet. Are ya? Hmm. It's been an enlightening experience speaking directly with industry experts. Um, So it's two collections. So we have this one, 46 limited edition pieces, uh, including two vintage style custom sourced by John Hickling of Glass Onion Vintage, which was really sad to see because I would have been a big fan of Glass Onion before this and to see them collaborating on something like this, not great. Um, She has spoken out against it since, which I was kind of surprised about and feels very non-Kardashian. And I know in some ways fans would argue that she's like the least Kardashian. Again, I'm doing bunny ears in terms of the machine, in terms of how she carries herself. Uh, in comparison to the other sisters but she has kind of spoken out against it since because naturally people were like sustainability and boohoo don't belong in the same sentence myself included Um, 
she spoke out on Instagram. I think it was ahead of the show. And then I wonder, is it just more publicity for the show, for the fashion show itself? But anyway, she said, I went back and forth about doing this collection with Boohoo because the first thing I think about when I hear the words fast fashion is that it's bad for our planet. Confessed that she expected backlash because the two just don't go hand in hand. Yet she hoped that the partnership would raise awareness on the impacts of fast fashion on our planet. I thought about how pushing Boohoo to make some initial changes and then holding them accountable to larger change would be impactful. It's definitely making some noise, which is exactly what I was hoping for. She added, uh, I certainly don't have all the answers, but for someone who has done a fast fashion line collaboration in the past, which didn't get backlash because I was not calling attention to trying to make better changes, I feel proud about doing it with intention and purpose. She concluded on a hopeful note saying, I will be elaborating on their changes, how we've made this line more sustainable and what we've learned, what I've learned uh, as consumers can do to help. All to come. And you've had sustainability activists coming out. Brett Staniland, who was on season seven of Love Island, uh, he was tagged in the post by his brother Scott, who's also a big sustainability advocate. And he like tagged him and was basically like, she'll be in touch. And she replied and said, I'm taking screenshots of any interesting questions slash comments. I feel it'll better my knowledge so I can help make fast fashion. And, the, and this in brackets. And this is a larger problem working the entire fashion industry due to fast changing trends, uh, accountable for making changes. And there's a part of me that's just, I do actually do not understand why she responded other than to drum up more publicity and to have it be trending and to have it do well in terms of SEO because it's not a very Kardashian thing to respond to things. And I think the majority, regrettably, would have just carried on as normal and ignored this news. And there, we, there would have been the vocal few again who were like, this is bad, we should not be letting people get away with this, blah, blah, blah. But I think her, the people who are actually going to buy this do not care. Do not care. They are into fast fashion. They are happy if anything comes with the sustainability green leaf slapped on label because it makes them feel a tiny little bit better, even though they're not really willing to interrogate what any of that means. And a lot of it means jack shit, to be honest. Even when you talk about the collection, it features materials made from recycled fibres, traceable cotton, recycled sequins, recycled polyester for its faux leather pieces. Like polyester is just fabric or plastic. You know what I mean? Like the brand will introduce transparent practices for shoppers who want to learn more about the apparel as well. It's just, it's so, it's so, so, so beyond frustrating. I do wonder if anything is going to come from these conversations, these hypothetical conversations she's going to have with sustainability activists. And just a weird move, just weird moves all around, even beyond my position on fast fashion, her speaking out about it. I don't know. Maybe it's a sign that the fast fashion industry is floundering as well, that you're pairing with someone like Courtney, would you not go for one of the other sisters? I don't know. It's not very rock and roll or punk either, is it? For an aesthetic that she's very much on the back of and something that she's been channeling in her aesthetic and her relationship with uh, Travis Barker. I don't know. What do you think? Where do you think the Kardashians lie in 2022? What is their purpose? Are you keeping up with them? Do you watch the show? Do you think the kids are the next gen for the Kardashian Jenners alike? Let me know. I'd be very interested to hear. But for now, from lots of other flaps to another, let's introduce our next guest. My guest on Flop Culture this week is one of my favourite drag performers and is also responsible for bringing so many of our fave drag performers from screen and stage to these shores. And their flop this week could not have been more specific or more apt given everything we've just talked about in this space of influencers, sponsor content, uh, Kardashian era, etc, etc. I am delighted to welcome Victoria Secret to Flop Culture to talk about how a chocolate bar derailed one celebrity's career. Enjoy. <laughs> Victoria Secret, thank you so much for joining me on Flap Culture. I'm just excited you're back like with a <laughs> podcast because I love hearing you chat about anything. So oh, 
stop. Is that more of a pressure? So Do you feel pressure a little bit? He, the ima- when I put up the tease, the amount of gays that message me being like, what is it? What yeah. is it? Yeah. To that, I was like, where have you all come from? Why do you care? Well, I, within about two minutes, I was texting Paul Ryder and I was going, do you know what this is? And Paul was like, no, I'm, try- I'm also trying to find out. And I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to message her now. I was like, what's happening? And I kept then- telling people I was launching a leggings brand. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, what is it? I was like, leggings brand, obviously. Um, a pleasure to have you here. What have you picked as your flop? Mine is like a, a twofold one. Um, okay, so I am a child of the 80s. So Blue Peter was very close to my heart. I watched it every day. That and Neighbours. And also love a bit of confectionery. Uh, and the bit that stood uh, was like sticking out. And it, this is like, by the way, like so not something someone would think of is this Cadbury's bar called a snowflake. Okay. And it flopped so hard, but also destroyed and made a career flop too. Um, yeah, uh, it was an obsession that we were all talking about at the time and we were all trying the chocolate bar and talking trash about it too. I'm obsessed. Yeah, because when I messaged you, I was like, you know, people are picking like albums or like movies and you were like, the snowflake, the, the <laughs> Cadbury snowflake. I was like, sure, whatever, sign me up. Uh, as you said, this was a chocolate bar, Cadbury chocolate bar. It was an offshoot of Flake mm-hmm. launched in August 2000, uh, 2000 and it was like, White, it was white chocolate on the inside and normal chocolate yeah. on the outside. Yeah. But basically, it was around the launch that kind of led it to flop because it was paired with this celebrity wedding and Thea Turner. Who yeah. is she? You mentioned Blue Peter for anyone who's not familiar. Okay, well, just to get into the specifics, it's actually the love child of a flake and a twirl, which, by the way, if anyone's stomach is rumbling right now, I don't blame you. (laughs) Where are they? Um, So, yeah, they were launching it. And, I mean, at the time, OK Magazine was the place to go every week. You know, we were all flicking through Heat Magazine. Um, I mean, I don't know, did did your mum keep toilet, uh, like a toilet full of magazines? Or is that just my my gross My mum thought they were absolute scum of the earth. But then I'd go to the hairdresser and I'd go to get the Heat Magazine and I'd get all like the Big Brother interviews, you know, okay. Grace speaks out. <laughs> Loved it. Lived for it, to be Loved. honest. It was like when the new magazine went into our toilet in our house, we didn't leave it for like an hour. So I'd be like, I need to get into the toilet. <laughs> and you're like, I'm just flicking through the magazine. But anyway, we were we were glued to OK Magazine at the time. Um, but they were always coming out with like new sensational covers. And they had got Anthea Turner, who was a Blue Peter uh, presenter. And honestly, one of TV's like highest paid presenters. She was... Everyone just loved her. Uh, blonde, blue eyes, and absolutely an angel. Um, but she was getting married to this guy called Grant Bove. They'd met each other, but they were both in relationships at the time, mm. which is kind of scandalous. And also at that time, especially scandalous. Uh, they both left their partners. Um, I was looking at this yesterday, and actually Grant went back to his wife for a little while, and then went back to Anthea. Um, so people were already a bit like, mm, this is not cute. Yeah. Cut to them getting married. Uh, they signed this huge deal with OK Magazine, which, I mean, they're saying it was about 125000 sterling, but uh, there's also rumours that it was up to 350000 which, I mean, that's a house. Yeah. That is a house. Yeah. Um, and there's then, as part of this, OK must have done a little deal on the side with Cadbury's to launch this new chocolate bar. So the cover was um, Anthea and Grant getting married with a gorgeous chocolate bar that was free, like if you bought the magazine. And people were shocked. They were like, you've just sold your wedding photos and you're promoting a bar at your wedding. Like, firstly, eating any type of chocolate in white is dangerous. Let's Stressful. acknowledge that. What mm-hmm. were they doing? Yeah. I mean, imagine just a few, like, only the flakiest, crumbliest but chocolate all over your wedding dress. it's so grass. messy as well. It's yeah. obviously going to crumble and ever. Oh, I can't. Yeah, as you said, OK Magazine had the pictures. Anthea Turner and Grandpa of uh, exclusive OK Wedding fo- f- photograph enjoying Cadbury's new slow- snowflake for the complete wedding coverage and a free Cadbury snowflake by OK Magazine this weekend. The Sun was the only newspaper to use the photo, but when they used it, they were like, as you said, people were scandalised by this. I think they called it sad. They described it as the most sickening wedding photo ever because it is just the two of them, you know. You know the way you'd get the glasses and you like link hands, whatever, and you're like drinking it. They're doing that, but it's with two chocolate bars. Yeah. Why was the reaction so 
strong? Was it a little bit of the context of their relationship? And, you know, as you said, the fact that people were like, you're selling out, this is flagrant advertising. But like, that's kind of the norm for celebrities, especially now. But even back then, you can guarantee a lot of celebs were getting a lot of shit for free and maybe they just weren't saying it or disclosing it in a way that was as obvious. Yeah, 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 totally. I mean, like, in a way, she was this original influencer. Whether she knew about it or not was always the fascinating part. But I think that um, that really people were coming at them not just because of the chocolate bar. They were kind of scandalising their relationship for leaving their partners to get together and it just so happened that this smug photo of them nibbling a bit of a chocolate bar was the catalyst that really exploded it all. Like, because you imagine going from being one of the most booked TV presenters to your diary completely emptying out. Um, Like, she had this huge TV show that was not renewed, all because of a chocolate bar. That was it. She must not even be able to walk down the chocolate aisle in Tesco's anymore. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Just literally PTSD, left, right and centre. I looked to her face. She's been talking about it again, like as recently as last year. But even mm. at the time, they were on honeymoon. I think it was, they were in South Africa or somewhere. And like they had said they were like extremely distressed about this because like her party line is that they knew there was going to be chocolate at the wedding. Like they had like a sweet cart there um, and it was either, I think it was someone from the magazine had suggested, you know, like we'll have chocolate there, blah, blah, blah. At no, at no point in their head were they like, this was going to be a massive feature. They hadn't seen this particular photograph before it was released. Um, yeah, they had said the request was from OK. Um, and they've, then I think Cadbury kind of tried to downplay it as well, basically saying, you know, whatever. Like it was, it wasn't a big thing for them. But then it was just, but like, what, do you think they really had no idea? Or like, because she, to this day, like we'll get into what she said about it since, but to this day, she's like, denies it, had no idea. They were paid nothing mm-hmm. for having the chocolate bar in there. They were obviously paid for the photos is the thing. I have a vision of Anthea Turner's shed with just boxes of this snowflake bar. I personally think that Anthea did have a clue. I mean, I'm sorry, it's your wedding day. At what point, like, I've watched friends who barely have time to eat on their wedding days, do you know what I mean? Because they're like flapping around. Whereas Anthea, like, posed with a photo of, of, of this bar. Like, you don't just do that out of nowhere. Like, I mean, especially if you know that this coverage is going to go into a magazine it's going to go everywhere you're probably thinking okay no I don't want to do that photo because that's going to like probably end up being used I just think that she was in on it in some way and she just can't face those boxes that are now in her shed but as part of the deal she got 100 boxes of snowflakes and they're sitting like gathering <laughs> dust release them and they were starving or you know when your friends come over and you've been given something you're like um, oh you'll, you'll have a penguin won't you you know no there was a deal on them that was Anthea they're for fully about two out of years like yeah. they're just fully trying to get rid of them <laughs> Um, even last year, as I said, she spoke to the son about it and uh, when she was remembering it, she said, I was vilified. You'd have thought I'd single-handedly manufactured COVID-19 in the laboratory and released it to the masses. I mean, I'm I mean, yeah, not great. Uh, yeah, I received this barrage of abuse and was accused of selling out on my own wedding. I honestly didn't receive a penny for that photo and had no idea at the time the furor it would cause. Um, and said that she continued like for the years that followed. She said she felt like she just needed to apologise again for this fact, you know, that she'd gotten with him, like they'd had an affair obviously, um, apologising for the fact that she did this like heinous thing with the bar for Cadbury's. I'm wondering, like, if she was to get married today, do you think the reaction would be as strong? Was it a product of its time or was it just, I don't know, because I look I look back to examples of Jonathan Bennett, I think is your man's name, from Mean Girls. Like his entire wedding, allegedly, I think, in my opinion, I don't know, whatever. I don't know if that gives me any legal protection. I'm pretty sure he got a lot of stuff either sponsored or for free. Like Nick Jonas and Priyanka Chopra Jonas, like they were averaging six-figure deals for the majority of their brand partnerships leading up to the wedding. Like that's, they were doing stuff with Tiffany, JBL, Elite Vodka, Lime Bike did stuff for his groomsmen, Malibu Rum, like they had it all sewn up. But I feel like we kind of, nobody gets mad about it. People side-eye it. But I feel like 
why was the reaction, why were we so cross? I just don't get it. Yeah, I don't think anybody had experienced that at the time. Like yeah. Now, like, people are doing it all the time. And, and, like, hands up, if someone wants to provide a few boxes of chocolate bars, if I ever get married, I'm open to it. Let's wheel them in and I'll pose one. Uh, but also, I think back then it was shocking because, you know, she was just this clean-cut person who was, like, you know, like, finding love again for the second time. And this was her way wedding day, people just were not ready for this so in your face um, we've been paid by a chocolate bar allegedly and I don't know, I think now, she, by the way she is about to get remarried uh, apparently and um, that marriage did not last however it did last a long time um, but he was cheating on, on her on the side which, you know what does they say if you find them what, what, what? like if they're, che- if you find them through cheating, chocolate bar gonna... can't save a marriage yes, yeah, there you go Let's just put it that. Uh, we were kind of brainstorming other examples of, because there's nothing funnier to me than celebrities signing up for these brand deals, allegedly, whatever, I don't know. And then just like monumentally fucking them up. And some of the examples you'd said to me, the one that came to mind for me was Nadine Coyle doing the album exclusive in Tesco. But we're going to save that. That's a flap on itself, girls. That episode Everyone is coming. Everyone can see that picture, by the way. If anyone wants to come on and talk about that with me, mm-hmm. this is an open invitation. Suggest <laughs> yourself. Um, but you had suggested... Uh, the Brill Cream with David Beckham, which was yeah. another thing. I feel like I vaguely heard of it in the back of my mind, but wasn't fully familiar. What happened there? Well, I mean, firstly, there was two products uh, when I was in school that like every single boy had. It was Brill Cream and Lynx. And I can kind of still smell both of them. Like if someone just says the word, I can smell what Brill Cream was like and Lynx. And uh, so David Beckham, I mean, li- literally anything he put his name on at the time, people were just like, I need, I need, I need. Um, and he had signed a deal with Brill Cream because he had the best hair. Let's yeah. face it, the absolute best divine. hair. Oh, oh, divine. Like, and okay, for a random, not like anything to do anything else fact I used to cut pictures of David Beckham out of Heat magazine and keep them in a secret little box <laughs> I'm not proud of this like there were other people too but that like I was I was a, I was a David Beckham stan do you know what I mean where is that box now uh, okay well like the even worst part of it is that the box was a was a cool waters box <laughs> an aftershave box because <laughs> again everyone wore cool waters at the time which was like Davidoff I think so um, yeah it was my secret little box of like David I'm, I'm so upset David Beckham got in her box there you go you can say that forever <laughs> I mean I'm no Rebecca Luce but okay um, so anyway he signed with Brill Cream because yeah gorgeous hair and two years into a four year deal he just shaved his head like he shaved his head he was trying to sell like gel which by the way everyone was over gelling their hair at the time it was a very exciting gel experience at the time but like he shaved it off so what, what are they supposed to do? Two Shaved years head, later. hair product. You know what I found funny though? He actually ended up doing like a, a show with ITV, Beckham's Real Story. I'm assuming it was one of those kind of sit down interviews. And basically Brill Cream then like bought out like the biggest advertising space in that show with uh, with an ad that didn't feature him. So I'd say that was their kind of like fuck you. We love but a he was also moment. at a point in his career that he was kind of a bit of a pantomime villain, mm-hmm. villain at England. Yeah. But like... I just love that. I, lo- I love picturing the boardroom and seeing the photos come out of him with the shaved head and the brill crane people being like, what the fuck yeah. are we going to do? Like, it's just... Don't forget the sarong. The sarong was like, they were wearing matching sarongs. I was still obsessed, by the way. And <laughs> We need to bring back the sarong. The sarong and then and these like leather kind of uh, like flip-flops as well, which I had to buy, by the way. They were tragic. <laughs> and then Alicia Keys and Blackberry. This is another one that again was ruminating my head in the back, but I kind of forgotten. She was basically introduced as their creative director in, I think it was 2013. Yeah, early 2013. And then as it turns out, she wasn't really using the Blackberry at all, was she? She got (laughs) caught up in a big wave. Totally. I mean, first off, you don't think of Alicia Keys as like an influencer. You don't see her like pushing things. So obviously they came with a gorge deal and she was like, right, let's do it. And she sent her first tweet out as creative director. And you know, underneath it, which by the way, I think Twitter has gotten people into a lot of like trouble over the years with location tagging or like other things like that. And uh, it said, tweet sent from iPhone. (laughs) She'd signed the deal. It was her first tweet as creative director of Blackberry. 
Blackberry, which I don't think we got the whole craze of Blackberries over here. However, that was a big deal in America. And I mean, also, there's loads of examples of that, like the Pepsi and, and Coke with like Britney and like, what's your t- favourite type of Pepsi? Yeah. And Britney being like, Pepsi is my favourite type of Pepsi. And you can see her brain just going, there's other types of Pepsi. What? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, this, uh, this Alicia Keys one, she was tweeting, I think, about a Drake song. Yeah, she quoted Drake's new song, Started From The Bottom. And as you said, the message tag is having been sent via the Twitter for the iPhone app. Um, but obviously she was after getting millions of dollars for this deal, probably. Um, so she tweeted then, basically going, oh, this is actually it word for word. What the hell? Looks like I've been hacked. I like Drake, but that wasn't my tweet. Sad face. You pathological liar, Alicia Keys. This was when I say less than two weeks later after like the big meeting where she's like, I'm so excited to bring them like in this new direction, whatever. And then sure, a year later, like the BlackBerry were essentially folding because as you said, they just couldn't keep up with everything else. We did have Blackberries as kids because we had the the BBM. That was like instant messaging. And it was also the first phone that I think you could like screenshot on. You had an app that you could get with Blackberry called Screen Muncher. So we'd be screenshotting all our BBMs. I'm trying to remember. I mean, like, okay, but uh, there's a few years between us. We won't get into exactly the specifics. <laughs> a year and a half, Max. <laughs> like, my first phone, I'm pretty sure, was 088, which uh, maybe some of the listeners don't even know what 088 was, but it was a number at one point. And, uh, yeah, I think, I, I don't think I had a BlackBerry. I don't know. I think that might have missed my generation. But, like, also, Alicia Keys missed out on the opportunity to say it was Rebecca Vardy's account. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> three years later, that's all she needed to do when it was thrown into the sea afterwards. The foreshadowing, the foreshadowing. <laughs> um, the snowflake kind of never came back. So I think it was renamed. So 2003 was renamed Flake Snow, but then was mm-hmm. fully discontinued 2008. But it was launched for the first time in Australia in 2015. So they could still be knocking around there. I mean, Australia have taken lots of things that weren't working over here and <laughs> tried to make them, you know, like what? I'm, I'm talking musicians that weren't able to work here <laughs> over anymore. We're talking presenters, won't name any names. You know who they are. And they're probably a judge. I'll name one, Rishora. <laughs> oh yeah I mean I like who went over like the, uh, Brian McFadden went over uh, Ronan Keating went over no hate to any of them love them all but like you know r- r- um, Australia is the land of dreams yeah truly is truly is and the snowflake can be a star there too there you go is it still on sale in Australia I, if any Australian listeners are listening please let me know I don't I don't think so like I don't think it ever really fully I feel like I definitely saw it on shelves mm-hmm. but I couldn't tell you the last time I'm going to go on eBay and see, can I track one down? We'll do a little taste test reaction. I'll see how much there. Oh my God, yes, yeah. please. That would yeah. be divine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be so By the fine. way, do you think Cadbury's knew what it was going to be used for? Or was it just going to be free with the magazine? That's a good question. Like, I wonder, see, the whole thing was with Flake, like it was very, they always kind of launched it with, you know, like a sexy, It was there was always a Flake girl, you know, and they were always kind of generally blonde, whatever. And that had been happening since 1959. So like, there is a part of me, as you said, because she was such a golden girl of telly and was very liked, but also people did fancy her. Yeah. I... I th- I feel like they would have been like, I sure be no harm if there is a picture of her with this, but maybe they were like, we'll just see. Yeah. I feel that like from the brand's perspective, they definitely had to have sign off on these photos. Nobody releases something that big. And- oh, oh, no, 100% I think they had sign off on the photos. I'm wondering, yeah. do they know maybe going in? But like, you know what I mean? And then it was just like someone there was like, let's get this shot. And then they were like, oh, class. That's that's it. Like, And we have that to go with the th- free chocolate bar then. Yeah, because she said she didn't have final sign-off on those pictures, which I kind of think I believe if you paid that amount of money back then. I mean, now I feel like people are getting paid like 50 quid and a few drinks for wedding photos. I don't think those, I think that golden era is over. Mm. But like, yeah, I feel like maybe, maybe she didn't. I don't know. By the way, her career was gone for so many years and she came back as a clean freak. That was the, she came back finally on the TV show as the queen of cleaning, Anthea Turner, OCD levels of cleaning. And that was, that was her kind of like claim to fame for a while. Came back and did Celebrity Big Brother 1 as well, because that was so funny. Like, researching for this, it's like, she's talking to comedian Jack D about, like, what went on. I'm like, that is such a 2000 sentence, where yeah. it's like, I can't even remember. I vaguely remember her being in it. I didn't remember Jack was in it, but mm-hmm. she had this whole conversation around the Cadbury chocolate bar thing. Mm-hmm. It's just so mad. Yeah, their, their statement at the time was, Miss Turner and Mr. Rovey have no contractual relationship with Cadbury's, nor did Cadbury sponsor the wedding reception. And the Cadbury spokesperson at the time basically said was that one of their 
watercress put to us by OK was could we supply some chocolate for the wedding but we did not pay anything to the couple or insist they had their picture taken with it there was no preconditions and there was no sponsorship deal with the Bovies um, and then OK Magazine came out and said that they had not been involved the couple hadn't been involved in the picture's release so they said that they hadn't seen the photos either but as you said you're being paid that much money you know yeah. what you look like on the day. You probably didn't think you were going to be... Totally. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. I'd say they just went off on him and they were like, it's fine. Like yeah. we're going to look class. We're going to be happy. We're going to be married. Mm-hmm. And instead it's the two of them eating chocolate bars. Totally. I want the story from the sneaky person who was working on the day who went up and gave them the chocolate bars and said, we just want to get a quick photo. Yeah. You know, you know, nothing you're a bit casual, you know, a little nibble. Oh, it could look really romantic. I want that story. Just carrying a bomb. Yeah. Like just <laughs> a chocolate <laughs> flaky falling apart bomb and just handing it to them. Where's oh the Netflix God. documentary? I need to see it. I need to see it. Uh, Vic, it's been a pleasure. Where can people find out more about you? You have a great podcast that I love and a great Patreon. So please plug away for all to hear. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, uh, me and my sister Davina Devine have a podcast called Petty Little Things, which centres around the fact that we're both kind of rotted people in certain ways about different topics and love a good moan. Uh, and then I'm a, I'm a, oh, I can't get into TikTok. <laughs> <Just can't. laughs> I'm trying so hard. <laughs> I'm actually not trying so hard. So I'm still, you know, very representative of my 38 years of age, living my best life on Instagram at Victoria's Secret Dublin, which I get a plethora of either nice people who know me or complaints about the brand saying, I bought this bra and can I return it? Which is no joke. I, uh, so yeah, come find me over there. Surely that, like, that is coming to an end with the whole them being linked to Jeffrey Epstein in that documentary. Like, when is that brand going to die? I mean... I don't that- wish for anyone to lose their jobs or anything, but like at the same time, come on. Right, give I mean, Vic a break she can't answer about double D's anymore like <laughs> I, I was joking with like uh, Willem and Alaska who, if anyone doesn't know they're from Drag Race and they did a campaign for American Apparel just as American Apparel were falling under and, and they joke saying that was their campaign that made that happen I was like please do one with Victoria's Secret so the <laughs> brand will just go and then maybe people can forget and I just don't have to change my name but I picked that name 20 years ago when they didn't even exist in Ireland and I thought that was so funny and it's Why don't not. you change it to Snowflake now? <laughs> Ooh, I mean, am I going to have to pose at the chocolate bar and yeah. get a nibble? Perfect. Yeah. Contractually Done. obligated. Capri, <laughs> if you're listening, we're here and we're readily available. Um, I'd love to have you back. Yes. You had a few other suggestions. Maybe don't say. I, oh, love, I, love, I love this suspense. I'm also really excited about this concept. I think it's really genius because everything like is fascinating when it flops. That's what, that's why I started the podcast. Everything go. is so... I love failures and I love nothing more than a celebrity failure, to be honest. I do want to see inside your notes up, though, about what other ideas you had for podcasts because I'd say there was some like strange ones, some great ones, and oh, then some more. ones. There was a lot ones. of shit being thrown at all. Like it was, <laughs> it was a grim time. Nobody wants to see that. Um, Vic, it's been an absolute pleasure. Can't wait to have you back. Thank you. Victoria's Secret there speaking to me. Much appreciated. Cannot wait to have them back. Finally, let's get into who is top of the flops this week. You're a flop. Top of the flops this week is every person who used or thought in their head about using the hashtag not my Ariel in response to the first teaser clip from the new live action Little Mermaid movie starring Halle Bailey. Where do I even begin with this? It just, people, (laughs) I just don't understand how people can be mad about this when the movie is based on mermaids, creatures that famously do not exist. Cartoon mermaids do not exist. When the casting was announced, people were annoyed because, look, the argument that racist people want to put forward was that She doesn't have red hair. She has to have red hair. Um, But like, if we're going to call a spade a spade, it was also the fact that the Ariel they knew and loved was now no longer white. And that does not sit well with some people. Halle Bailey has the chops. We've heard her sing in this clip. She sounds incredible. If you haven't checked out uh, Chloe and Halle, by the way, what are you doing? Insane. Other criticisms around how the ocean looks I'm just, I'm a gog. What were you expecting? The Trabulgan wave machine? And these these critiques are coming from some people who have never seen, who've never stepped foot into the ocean, would not be caught dead down the 40 foot. You know what I mean? I just, 
if the movie is going to be shite, it's going to be shite because of Disney for no other reason. Disney have, has famously bungled live action. And I also just feel like some of these live action stories, when they're animated originally, they don't translate well to live action. We've seen it with The Lion King. The only good Disney live action that I can think of is Cinderella with Lily James. Very good. I am cautiously optimistic about this. And as I said, the only reason that I think it will be a flop, it won't have anything to do with Hallie. She's extremely good and I love this new take on The Little Mermaid and I don't know how you can make those critiques and then sit, not look at the TikTok videos of little girls reacting to seeing themselves being represented on screen in a way that they've never seen before. How you can get mad at that, I don't know. And if you are getting mad, you are such a flop. Get a life, get a job, get a hobby. And that's all I'll say on that Really excited for The Little Mermaid. I fancied Sebastian. Did anyone else? And the original Little Mermaid endorsed her. So, Tony Benson cannot wait. So, shove it. Thank you so much for listening to Flap Culture. We are on Instagram and TikTok under Flap Culture underscore pod. You can get in touch at helloflapculture at gmail.com. If you leave a five-star review and your name or nickname on Apple Podcasts, uh, I would recommend a bop or a flap to you. And you can also leave a five-star review on Spotify. Today's bop is for bomb bomb 1990 exclamation mark. Uh, I want you to go listen to Winter Gardens with the music I die. An incredible extended play album. Very, very good. She did not get the credit she deserved. Uh, if you li- like, I was about to say, if you like Dirty Talk, who doesn't like Dirty Talk? It's just that. It's just wall to wall bangers for the entire album. So I hope you enjoy that. I will see you next week. This podcast has been edited by Adam Shanahan. My artwork is by the lovely Brian Lambert. It would help if I spoke into the mic for that part, wouldn't it? Bye, guys. Talk to you next week. Bye.